Hey guys, it's Kelly, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you a video all about trading in your car when you still owe money on it. So in this video, I'm going to cover what to do, what to expect, and I'm even gonna give you a tool on how you can save time doing this at the dealership. But if this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families, but I also give car buying tips and tricks as someone who has been selling cars since 2016 and is the third generation to enter into my family's business of owning car dealerships. So let's talk about financing a car. So when you finance a vehicle, you finance it through a bank. This bank is referred to as the lien holder in this situation. They are who has your title to your car. So until you pay off your car, you don't have the title, right? Now, when it comes to trading in a car that you owe money on, one of the key components you need to know is what your payoff is. So your payoff is what you still owe to the bank. Your payoff is not your monthly payment times how many payments you have left because interest and things are calculated that would make that number different. But it's what you actually owe to the bank, what the dealership has to write the check for to then get the title to your car so then they can sell it. Now, trading in a car that you owe money on happens all the time. And in fact, I think that when it comes to deciding if you want to trade your car in and sell it yourself, it is much easier to trade into the dealership because for you to sell it independently, one, it's harder to sell the car because you don't have the title. And then there's also just more paperwork involved with then paying off your loan and then getting the car to the new customer. So what a benefit of trading into the dealership is that they, they take care of all that paperwork for you. Okay. So when you go to trade in your financed car, there's two things that could happen. You'll either have equity or inequity. Now, it is important to know if you have equity or inequity before going into the dealership because we wanna know exactly what we're working with. So what is equity? Equity is when you owe less on your car than what it's worth. For example, if they appraise your trade and they tell you it's worth $15,000 and you only owe 12, well then you have three grand worth of equity. That three grand of equity can be applied to the loan. You can just take the cash in some situations, you have that flexibility. Now let's reverse those numbers. If they tell you your trade is worth 12 and you owe 15, you now have $3,000 of inequity or your what's called being upside down, meaning you owe more on the car than it's worth. Now it's not impossible to get out of a car this way. And yes, in some scenarios, they can take that inequity and roll it on to the price of your new loan. But there are some things to know which we will talk about in a second. But back to what I said earlier, it is so important that you know if you have equity or inequity before going to the dealership. We want to be educated car buyers and we don't want to get any surprises. So if you're wondering about how you can find your payoff, there's a couple of different ways to do it depending on your bank. You can obviously go online, you can read your statement, or you can just call. Now let's talk a little bit about finding out what your payoff is and why it's so important. Well, for one, we want to be educated. We want to know that the numbers we are looking at is actual real numbers. All the time selling cars, people would come to me and say, oh, my payoff's about $15,000. So sure enough, I would work a car deal with the payoff being $15,000. And the next thing you know, it's really $17,000. And now we have to start all the way over. So if you wanna save time at the dealership, know your exact payoff. And in fact, we're gonna do this even before we go to the dealership. There's a link in the bottom of this description and it takes you to a link to a payoff verification form. Print this out and fill it out ahead of time. This will save you time at the dealership because they're already gonna have to do this. So if you can do it ahead of time, one, you'll be more educated and ready to negotiate and you'll save a little bit of time. The form is super easy to fill out. It just asks for your name, your address, your lien holder or your bank, and then some information about your vehicle. When you ask for a payoff, make sure you ask for a 10 day payoff, meaning like how good is that payoff for? Because obviously when you work a car deal, it might take the dealership more than just one day to send the check to the lien holder. So you ask for a 10 day payoff and then you ask for the per diem or then how much per day is that 10 day payoff going to go up. It's all laid out in that worksheet. So print off my payoff verification form, fill it out ahead of time, know exactly what your payoff is down to the penny because it will help you negotiate a better car deal. Okay. So once you have your payoff verification form filled out, I then recommend going to Kelly blue book and getting an idea of what your trading value is. This is honestly just like good information to have, even if you're not trading out of your car right now, just so you know exactly when you've crossed over that threshold of being out of inequity. Um, it's very difficult if, especially if you don't put any money down, to be in an equity position in the first three years of you owning that car. After that, after you pay it off for at least three years, normally you are in an equity position. So it's important to know just where you're at in terms of your loan. I think it just overall makes for a better um, future car purchase when you know exactly when you're over that new equity. So it comes down to negotiating a car deal. It's important to be open and transparent with your payoff because the dealership is not going to give you more or less for the car if the car is paid off or not. So I don't, I would just, I would be honest and transparent with exactly how much you owe. So you can see 
exactly what numbers you're working with. Now, let's say you're in an equity position. For the most part, you have the option for what you wanna do with that money. So you can either just take the money, you can apply it to your new loan, you can apply a part of it as a down payment, the options are yours. The only warning I will give you is that if you're coming from a purchase to a lease and you have some equity, I would not put a lot of that equity down on your lease because if you've heard me talk about it before, it actually doesn't make much financial sense to put money down in a lease. Since you don't owe anything, that money doesn't really go anywhere. All it does is lower your payment. So let's say you, know, you get in an accident year one of your lease and you put $10,000 down, $5,000 down, you don't get any other money back. It just goes away. So if you are going from a purchase to a lease, you have equity, I would just take the cash. Let's say you have inequity. Mm, a little trickier when you have inequity. Now it's not impossible to get out of a car when you have inequity. Yes, you can roll over your inequity into your new loan on some vehicles. It really depends on two things, your credit and the vehicle you're buying. Let's say you have great credit, then you may be able to roll over more inequity into your next loan. However, at some point, you can't borrow so much money on a car if the car isn't worth that much money. Let me give you a better example. We call it carrying the loan. So for example, if you have $10,000 of an equity and you're looking at a $30,000 used car, you can't finance $40,000 on a used car because it's not worth $40,000 and it's a depreciating asset. So the bank would never allow that. You won't be able to get a loan on the vehicle. So if you are dealing with a lot of inequity, a lot of dealerships and a lot of banks recommend that you look for newer vehicles or a new vehicle. Why? Because a new vehicle can carry more in equity because of rebates and dealer discounts. So essentially, if you have $10,000 of inequity, maybe the bank will allow 110% of the car's value, right? So you need to find rebates, dealer discounts, down payments, all to eat up that inequity so that you can get into a new car loan. I also see it make the most financial sense if you're trying to get out of an equity to find a vehicle that has 0% available on it because if it has 0%, at least it's not costing you anything to borrow the additional money. It's kind of hard to give you like a blanket answer of which cars carry equity, which cars don't. And ultimately it's going to come down to your credit and your specific situation. I see a lot of car buyers assume since they have negative equity, they need to try, they need to, try to find the cheapest car on the lot to keep their payments the lowest, right? But again, in reality, the older, the cheaper cars cannot handle the inequity that comes on some of these loans. Now let's talk a little about leasing and if you still owe some money or your lease is not up yet. Can you definitely get a little bit more complicated? So if you still owe money on your lease, it can be difficult to get out. Leases are designed to go to term. However, if you're watching this video, anytime around 2021, used car prices are absolute insanity and people have, for one of the first times ever, equity in their leases, meaning your payoff on your lease is a lot less than what a dealership will buy your car for. So if this is the case, it works the exact same way as a trade and you're going to have your payoff and then you're going to have what your car is worth. Some lenders or manufacturers do not allow third party buyouts like Ford and Lincoln and Nissan and Infiniti. I think those are the only ones but it's kind of changing every day. In fact, Nissan Infinity just decided in May that they were no longer allowing third-party buyouts. So if you are looking to get out of your lease, my advice to you would just be to, just like you would with the purchase, get multiple numbers, know your payoff, and then see if you have equity or inequity. If you have an equity in your lease, if you have equity in your lease, you can still get out of it. You can take your equity and either apply it to your down payment, you can take your inequity and roll it into the loan provided the car you're looking at can carry it. It's complicated. So the way that you can be prepared is to know exactly what your payoff is, exactly where the dealership needs to send the check to and to know exactly what that per diem is. So that was a lot of information. Comment below if you guys have any questions or if you have any other video ideas for me. I have also some other car buying content videos out there on YouTube as well as head to my Instagram at the car mom because I do a lot of car related content there. I hope you are having a great day. I'm having a great day and I'll talk to you next time.